Hey guys, hopefully you can hear me. We are in normal Illinois. As soon as you can hear me, comment below. I know there's already a few people joining, but just want to make sure that audio is good. I'm reading the comments. All of that is working. And um, yep, this is the Rivian van, electric van. This is the 500 and it's a live stream. I'll have a full review posted on this channel. We don't do very often lives on out of spec reviews, but I figured, well, cool opportunity, cool vehicle. We're one of the first ones to ever test it. So maybe we'll play around and maybe you guys want to learn along with me. So yeah, this is what we're doing. I'm just juicing it up. I'm going to do a little range test situation. So we're doing, what are we doing? 41 kilowatts at 70%. Someone left a Hot Wheels here on the charger. It wasn't me. I don't know who did that. But um, yeah, so we're going to do a little 70 mile per hour highway test. May as well, since we have it. When else are we going to have the opportunity, you know? And uh, do all the fun stuff with it. So we can't use it as a comparable range test. I may not even drain it to zero because, yeah, not sure. But may as well have some fun with it while we can get a sense of how far this thing will go. So, yeah, thanks for joining everyone. Just just starting to go live, but we got this thing. Holy smokes, I'm so excited. <laughs> it was not meant to happen, but uh, yeah. So, yeah, any questions or anything you guys want to know about it, happy to take you on a tour. This one's kitted out as the Rivian service van. So this folds up. And you can see here, actually, interestingly, the door blocks some light. Uh, I'm just learning about this along with you guys. We have compressed air. We have tire changing machines, all the good stuff inside the cab here. You can see it juicing up at the moment. And yeah, I heard there's a crazy windstorm back in Colorado. Here it was windy today, but it wasn't crazy, I would say. And uh, yeah, so... Yeah, this thing is like the ultimate service rig. You can check this out. It's got a NEMA 1450 right here built into it, which is sick. <laughs> it's got, you know, 120 volt outlets, NEMA 515s everywhere. Interestingly, not 520s, but 515s. Yeah, so all very good. There's also some very Euro style breakers over here. You can see a 40 amp breaker over here and then some other ones as well all for the service equipment cross-country race not sure i'd want to do that in this one this isn't really meant for fast traveling as you can tell by the 41 kilowatts at 72 percent uh which is actually better than i've gotten earlier today on this thing so this is just meant for fleet use and you know service vehicle like this delivery vehicle like amazon where they can go back to a depot and charge up overnight so we'll pull this down and close it down there. Technicians wanted if anyone wants to work for Rivian. Thanks, Lewis, for the super chat. Appreciate that. All the super chats, of course, go to videos like our Ocean to Ocean truck series. We wouldn't be able to do that without your support. So appreciate all that stuff. And uh, yeah, R2 or R3. Sure, I filmed R2 today. Hopefully we'll have our video live for you tomorrow, a full in-depth look of R2. And I, I showed a couple R3 things in there. I didn't really film them because it's so far away from production, but R2 at least is a little bit closer. But this is the one I've been wanting to film for so long, the Rivian van. I mean, this is the RSV, the Rivian service van, but I think they also have the Rivian commercial van, the RCV, which is like this, but without the upfit. And uh, yeah, it's just so cool. It's not the fastest charging, but again, it doesn't need to be. This is a fleet vehicle. I shot a full, I don't know, super long video on this one uh, today that I'm, I'm gonna continue to shoot for it after this charging session. I'm charging it up to full ahead of a range test. I'm then gonna drain it to zero and then charge it back up to full after that. So that's the plan for the rest of the night, essentially. I can show you in here, someone asked how much mileage was on this one. I think this one, yeah, has 99 miles on the odometer, brandy new, still figuring out. Battery size, 100 kilowatt hour LFP. They claim, I think it's about 90 usable though, would be my guess. I think that's what the EPA documents were showing. Yeah, really nice lighting in here and everything. How does it drive? Drives really nice. Uh, you guys know I own a Sprinter 
this is this is significantly nicer than a sprinter to drive i have not driven the new e sprinter but just having 330 horsepower is this thing front wheel drive you put your foot down at anything above 40 miles an hour and it's struggling for traction it really feeds in the power nicely from a start so you're not really spinning tires the whole time but if you go around the corner and mat the throttle you'll you'll spin up the inside tire if you want to have some fun so um the back is climate controlled in a sense here let me show you guys so first of all this is the key on my way to the back this right here is the key it's different than our um one this key works every single time without fail completely perfectly and it only unlocks by the way there's two more rivian vans right over there on the trailer and more rivians going by <laughs> over there with normal illinois rivian town uh it, this only when you stand by a door it unlocks so this kind of clips into your pants you can see this here or your shirt pocket or something and when you walk up to a door it unlocks that specific door but not on the other side or not on the back it's really cool also every time you put the vehicle in park this door closes and every time oh no the other way around that's what happens when you put it in gear and when you put it in park it opens up automatically which is really kind of cool but i've had blue with me today as well so i closed the door on him a couple times and it seems to spring back he hasn't been split in half yet uh, so uh, James's question was, is it climate controlled? Well, it has a fan back here that's really loud. Uh, it sounds like a million laptop fans. I'll turn it on here with cargo fan. That's an auto. Let's put it in on. Take a listen to this as it doesn't do anything. Maybe I need to put climate on first. Hold on. Yeah, let's go custom climate on. What? It, it's it's in our video i got it to work for sure without issue maybe i need to have the door closed maybe i need to have it on there we go on not sure why it's not working now what got the ac ripping maybe it's just too cold sorry don't know why it's not working this is ripping up here uh, actually, this is kind of interesting. You guys will find it interesting. You don't set your cabin temperature with a number. It's just how cold or how warm do you want. And when DC charging, you'll notice heating is unavailable while charging. And we are DC charging on this Electrify America station right here. So you can't actually stay warm while charging, which is odd and something you can do in normal Rivian. So I'm not sure what's up with that. So we'll hit off. By the way, there's a little seat right here whoops pulled it a little too hard but there's a little seat right here and it's heated with this little button that heats this pad which is gets really warm actually very very cool this is like if you have an extra driver with you Alyssa was with me today so she sat in there most of the time and worked out pretty dang well and uh oh, Zach just left this charger nice but yeah I mean I gotta say I'm just so thrilled I'm six foot one like I mentioned uh in a previous video probably and you can see just how much headroom i have and even if i stand well even under the door i fit perfectly fine and walking through the like midway door i don't even have to duck i can just go full head up and fits really really nice so loving that yeah heated jump seat that's cool totally agree um what's weird is i don't know why the fan's not going on now the only thing i can think is it's just cold back here so maybe there's a temperature minimum that it won't turn on with but it sounds so loud and in the full video review that will be there for sure so yeah any questions that you guys have just throw it up here we're going to be doing uh you know happy to answer anything while i have it i have no restrictions with this um yeah the rivian guys were awesome rj just handed me the keys he's like go have fun so yeah, I have it until tomorrow morning, basically. I got to go back to Colorado, so I have it until then. But I'm just DC charging it to full ahead of a range test tonight. I'm going to just run it at 70 miles an hour, which this van at 70 miles an hour is not going to do well. This is a city vehicle. I just want to log the 70 mile per hour number. When I get one again, I'm going to do in the city, and it'll do you know four times the range at low speed, but I just kind of need to do that. Uh, one thing you guys will find interesting, actually, is the seat is not technically heated and cooled or i guess technically it is heated and cooled but not in the traditional way when you have the climate control running either 
cold or warm, it will pipe the vents into the seat structure itself by hitting this button right here. It turns on another fan underneath the seat and that actually pushes the cold or warm air. So you can't do cooled seat with hot air or the other way around. Uh, the peak charging rate, I have not drained this low. I'm just charging it up to 100 ahead of a, a range test. So it, does, it hasn't been great. Like 44 kilowatts roughly is the most that I've seen. Uh, the LFP pack doesn't seem to charge that fast. It's rated for 50 kilowatt charging, but then says it can do 100. I'm not sure if that's an optional extra that maybe this one doesn't have. Again, it, there's not much information in the display here. We're doing 37, 36 kilowatts at 78%, which this is what it should do. This is normal. And uh, I've already tested this charging performance at the Rivian Adventure Network, at the factory, as well as here. This is repeatable, so I at least know I'm getting what it wants. The estimated range is 160, 160 miles, 168 miles. And then the RDV or the commercial van, the RCV 700, which is the one that's longer than this and wider than this that one gets like 150 miles it's a 100 kilowatt hour lfp pack but i don't think um yeah i don't i don't think they let you use all of it does service mode work absolutely service mode works so you tap up top you get your ride menu pop in and you can see here if i reload the thing here we are charging um eas show maximum available current based off of uh, the vehicle request and this is the actual request if it comes up above 100 amps this will then show that the charger can do more than 108 but essentially this is showing we are not charger limited even though we are only getting 36 kilowatts battery pack temperature has been very consistent holds steady around 21 or 22 degrees uh, on plug-in which is great and uh yeah turn your phone sideways i don't think the video could support it i think it has to be uh, vertical which is better for people on mobile. Yeah, sorry for f folks that say they wish this wasn't vertical. We'll have a full wide view coming very soon. Don't worry. And a full review, of course, uh, video. By the way, these are like the largest sun visors ever. I'll show you this. <laughs> I'll back up so I can get it all in frame. Look at those sun visors. That's crazy. And it's so funny when you're sitting, especially in the jump seat, like I'll sit here, for example, I can't reach it without uh, lifting my butt out the seat <laughs> to pull this down. So it's pretty crazy. Yeah, cool that you watched part three of the truck race. Really appreciate that. That's awesome. Yeah, that went up today and yeah, big thanks for watching. Did I take it for a drive yet? Yeah, I've been driving it. Uh, I think I picked it up with 50 miles on it. It's got 100 miles on it now, something like that. I've charged it a few times and about to do a range test and charging test with this thing tonight. So, yeah. Tesla NAX adapter works. I have not tried it. I didn't bring a, a Tesla NAX adapter with me. I drove my Model S here. I didn't think I'd be doing any testing. And honestly, the charging infrastructure around normal Illinois kind of sucks. So I wish I did bring it, but at least we have a working charger right now. So all is good. Yeah, the new Mercedes Sprinter has way more range for sure. Absolutely more range. We need to run them side by side though. Looks like an Amazon van. This is essentially the same base structure of an Amazon van. Very little differences. And in fact, even in the UI, at least when you're driving, it still shows the Amazon logos in there. So this is two-wheel drive, front-wheel drive. Yeah, I didn't did not buy this. I just am borrowing it from Rivian sort of a last minute thing. I came out for an event and they said, hey, do you want to drive the van and be kind of one of the first people ever to review it and make video, first to really make videos with it and test it for sure. Um, but I think Dan Neal from the Wall Street Journal had a quick go in it. Wow, this is weird. Our EA screen's wigging out. We've been here longer than two minutes, haven't we? What the heck? And maybe we have put in 13 kilowatt hours, but why does it say two minutes? And it thinks we started at 80%. That's weird. Don't know what's up with that. I just saw it like glitch and in, in, out of the corner of my eye. So I'm not sure what's going on with that. Yeah, I don't think this will charge on superchargers. At least all the communication that I've heard from Rivian, it's only been R1S and R1T that can supercharge right now. I think these might be able to in the future, but for now, I don't think they've done the validation. Maybe they have. I don't know. Everyone at Rivian's asleep anyway. I can't really ask them. 
So I'm not, not totally sure. It doesn't really matter for our testing in this case. Yeah, I really want to get one of these out to Colorado to run through everything. <laughs> also just noticing I have literally no license plate on this. I, I, I swear I took it straight from their event. So we're riding dirty with no plates, which is amazing. <laughs> I love how, <laughs> I love how that all played out. And uh, yeah, no, uh, no uh, towing option on the back either. A hazard light situation that if you click the hazard lights once, like this, you can see Alyssa's calling. I don't know if she's watching the live stream or not. You get normal hazard lights, right? This is like the turn signal speed. It's actually pretty slow and they're incredibly bright, really bright axles here. But there's an emergency hazard switch in the controls menu. So this is like delivering packages, driving around depots, got the hazards on. But if I come here and put emergency hazard lights on, Oh, there's a train here as well. Oh, we got even brighter lights back here, by the way. Holy smokes, I can go bright, medium, or dim. Wow, that gets really bright back there. Um, oh, why did they not turn on? Let's go emergency hazard lights. Oh, yeah, there we go. Okay, flip this toggle. Now, disco party. Hazard lights to the moon. So... <laughs> Oh, Zach left those Hot Wheels. Yeah, so he's got a Fiat 500E, I'm guessing, over here. And then there's a Taycan on this one. And these two are dead. So there's only two working stalls. This is nice. Mamba Green Taycan right there. Sick. <laughs> so this is the emergency hazards up front. I want to take a look at them in the back. Dang, the whole, look at the size of the freaking light bar on this thing, it's crazy. Oh my gosh, this is really flashing. <laughs> so cool. Is it nice to drive? Yeah, it's really cool to drive, really enjoyable to drive. You can see they have nice grab handles to get in easily. Don't want people to think we're <laughs> giving them a seizure from having such flashing lights here. So now we're really slowing down up top, 22 kilowatt at 82%. Man, this thing charges slow up top. Your fleet has 15 EDVs. That's so cool. Yeah, this would make a sick ambulance. Has a mid 2,000 pounds payload. I think 2,900 in the EDV 500 and then 2,500 pounds in the EDV 700. But the GVWR of the 700 is a little bit higher, of course. Um, what tires does it use? Yeah, let's look. We will look, I believe this has a reverse kind of leaf spring basic suspension under here. In terms of tires, see if I can spot there. 24570 R17s all around. I know that, but I can't, oh yeah, there are. Does it say Continental? Yeah, Continental tires. Continental what? I honestly can't read. It's right there, but I don't have my flashlight on. I can't see what it is. Maybe on this side we can see the tire model no too dark i think continental da, 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 da. No, no. i'll make sure it gets in the full review though don't worry uh is there a flashlight in the door i don't think so but we can definitely go check Ooh, nice john cooper works mini over here very cool let's look to see there is one there's also a manual keyhole right here in the door so in case you lose all 12 volt power you have a little key release right there no flashlight in the door as far as i can see so good call on that and here's some of the weight ratings so 70 psi in the tires holy smokes <laughs> that's real rivian stuff right there but honestly for 70 psi they the vehicle rides pretty smooth. Yeah, what power outlets in the cab? A bunch. This thing has a NEMA 1450 in it and a bunch of 120 volt outlets. You, they really let you use a lot of power from the main battery pack here. Yeah, I bet it claws the front tires, absolutely. If you're ripping on this thing, it's gotta be pulling them. 
and uh, the can you drift it no it's front wheel drive there's no way to activate the parking brake and it's probably front heavy would be my guess if you have a bunch of stuff in the back you might be able to lift off throttle rotate it but if you go around a corner too quickly it shows up a message on the screen that says slow down for corners you're going too fast <laughs> and you do feel like you are going to fall out of the seat which is kind of funny i don't think i actually closed this door all the way let me close that there we go much better max charge rate i'm not sure we're going to find out for sure yeah we're going to find out uh, we've been charging up top so i'm going to get it basically up to full drain it to zero and then do a range test at that point. Yeah, with the reverse, I don't think you're spinning this thing around. There's really no traction control off or anything like that in here. You probably have to pull a wheel speed sensor to have any fun. Um, would I buy one? Yeah, they're expensive though. This thing's over $80,000. And that's for a stripped out delivery one with like nothing inside of it. So they're not cheap. I don't know what the fleet deals, then maybe they give you a discount if you buy a bunch of them but uh yeah they're definitely not cheap it's on the website um yeah i don't know not not cheap at all <laughs> convince your mom to get an ev <laughs> i don't know i don't know if i can convince people to buy electric i'm not really it's not my job we're here just to review them <laughs> yeah so this this thing is so sick it's so fun uh range we're gonna find out here in a moment and I think, uh, of course, businesses can write off even a little bit more as well. So I guess let's compile what are the things you want in the main video, because I'm going to have to film all of that tonight. This has to go back to Rivian before I leave early in the morning. So we need to get, obviously, the tire model in there. Of course, I want to take a picture of all of the um, door cards so we know the, the loading information. Uh, charging curve, of course, we're going to get for you. It doesn't seem very good at all doing 22 kilowatts at 84%. And keep in mind the EA charger freaked out for some reason. We started at 70%, not 80, like it's indicating. And we've been here longer than 10 minutes, I can tell you that. At least 22 minutes, because that's how long we've been live streaming and I've been plugged in the whole time charging. And uh, please look at the axle failure. Hmm, not sure I'm familiar. Oh yeah, I gotta look at suspension underneath. Definitely gonna film that, but I'm not sure what the failure is. Are they failing? Are they unreliable? I'm not sure. Uh, no camping mode at all. Nothing in there. Software is still pretty basic. Doesn't give you many options for software. You have a few broken axles. Okay. Yeah, I'll definitely. If you can send some kind of proof or show me that, I, I definitely want to put that in the video. Um, you know, here, here to review, not to promote. <laughs> it's got wipers that don't actually go that high. This needs to go in the video for sure. They come up to about here, just above your eye line, but they, it's no cyber wiper or hyper wiper on the cyber truck or anything like that. Yeah. Send, send the videos for sure. Regen braking. It does have, but it does a lot of blended braking as well. Unlike R1, R1 will do it at the last little bit. I'm also noticing just some more power plugs right down here wall outlets every time you lift off the pedal you can watch it get sucked in and it's doing friction brake blending on the d-cell so that's pretty cool yeah the Rivian. this is so nice to drive i mean i, I could only imagine delivering packages in this and i've driven all you know transit sprinter the rams i've driven all of those this is such a higher quality experience than any sort of off the shelf. I haven't driven the e sprinter yet, but a friend of mine actually drives for Amazon and he said he doesn't like the sprinter for ingress and egress. And he says some of the stuff inside's hard to maneuver. He actually says he prefers the new Rams. They've just updated them. And he said, those are the best. But I was like, dude, you got to try one of these things. And he's so into it, but he just hasn't had a chance to drive one here. Another thing that needs to go in the main video, I need to show you what's underneath this seat. A lot of 12 volt, a lot of uh, fuses. So that all needs to go in there, of course. Uh, zero to 60 yet? No, but I certainly will get you a zero to 60. Don't you worry. Uh, no off-road mode, of course. Yeah. How fast does it charge? Doesn't seem very fast, but this doesn't need to charge fast. This is a fleet vehicle that's going to sit overnight once you're done charging. So it's okay that it's a pretty slow charger, I would say. Yeah, I actually prefer these headlights over R1T and S. And, and from to my eyes, they're actually brighter. These headlights are amazing at night. You can see for miles, it's really cool. Huh, yeah. 
Uh, is this as much as the Mercedes camper you have? No, the camper conversions are expensive, and so that's quite a bit more money than, than something like this would go for. But if you think about this having a higher base price than a Sprinter, although not by much, Sprinters have gotten pretty expensive too. Um, yeah, this, this is... This is not great for road tripping and adventure at the moment. They charge pretty slow. They don't have much range. This is a great fleet vehicle. And for the RV, they're going to need a bunch of batteries, which then limits your payload. So yeah, I would say the RV market's still pretty tough for something like this. Sound system's bad. Yeah, I haven't tried the sound system in it yet. Thanks for, when I do the range test, I'll try it out for sure. Yeah. Um, any future NAC support? I think yes. I think Rivian's going NAX with everything. So yeah, look, our EA session just <laughs> reset itself again. It seems to be counting kilowatt hours, but now we're back to zero dollars and one minute. So maybe I'm getting free charging. What the heck? <laughs> That's amazing. I don't, I, I wonder if I'll get billed at the end or if it's just going to forget to bill me because it's now at zero dollars for our over 30 minute charging session that we've had <laughs> well hey i can't complain about free charging right so that's always interesting yeah there's a bunch of cameras all around the vehicle you can see that little nub on the side there that is a camera of course uh where's the nema 1450 i'll show you guys if i push this little button back here it undoes the latches for the rear and i can lift this up it does block some of the lights underneath the door, I have to say, uh, but it's okay. This is the NEMA 1450 right here in the back. And this is converted how Rivian wants it for their service operations. I don't know if it's bright enough, but you can see just right there, there's the NEMA 1450. I think I can actually even put on the, the light. There we go. Now you guys can see it. So very cool to have that built in in the back of the van. You can also, of course, close the door right from here just push it down latches in right there so so cool if you push the button on the right you can go to 1956 what button don't know but pretty cool how did you get your hands on this i'm the first one they really let play around with and it kind of happened last minute it's getting cold out here. I think I'm going to actually preheat the steering wheel because, yes, this is a van with a heated steering wheel. It has the dual-tone horn, by the way, like the uh, like the old R1 TNS does, not the single horn anymore. So that's kind of cool. Close this back up. There we go. And now you're in your cocoon. So, yeah, I want one. Yeah, I, I want one too. I think it's so neat. You have an SOS button that's behind a little flip up cover. So you can feel like James Bond, which is like, send the helicopters, boom, SOS. Pretty cool. Um, does it have driver plus? No, only adaptive cruise control, no driver plus. Uh, the key does look different. Oh, than the normal one, I don't know. Is this, I think this is, this is the key for it. I don't know if it's different than Amazon's key. Also has the VIN number on the back here. This is 1417. Might be an early one, but only had 100 miles on it. But it's also their, like, demo show vehicle. So I'm not sure how often this gets used or not. But certainly I've been using it and enjoying it today. And uh, I think that's kind of it from my side for the live stream. We'll have a full review video coming for you. Driving dynamics, acceleration, drag racing. <laughs> all, the important decision, all the important things you need to make a buying decision. I definitely have a few things more to show in the interior, so I want to film that now before I forget. EA still showing me free charging. I have no idea why, but let's just say a big thank you to Electrify America for this one, for giving us free juice. And um, yeah, I didn't bring my, did not bring my adapter, and I don't think it will supercharge. I'm not sure, but I don't think this one's been activated yet for supercharging. So my understanding is perhaps in the near future these will get it. And, uh, yeah, I need to haul around my tires. I need to basically make a tire vehicle. Anyway, this is so sick. It makes me kind of want to look for one on Copart. They do pop up from time to time. There's also a 30 amp plug right here. Uh, so they just have so much power in this thing. It's amazing. Really cool. Does a top speed of 70 miles an hour, but I think that's adjustable based on fleet. I think Amazon requested 70. So they're just kind of all base set at 70. So yeah, this is really cool
yeah, the windshield's huge. Heated windshield as well, I should mention. So, yeah, very cool. Uh, and it is quieter than the wine on the truck because this is the enduro drive unit, front wheel drive. This is the new motor. It's pretty quiet, of course. Very cool. So, yeah, I think we'll end the live stream there. 30 minutes. Just a quick tour while I'm charging up. You can see it shows your blind spot indication here in the mirror. I haven't actually noticed that. I wonder if it's on or not. I'm not sure. But uh, there it is, the Rivian. This is the RSV, the Rivian service van, which is the same chassis as the Rivian EDV, which is the electric delivery van, or the RCV, the Rivian commercial van, or they'll just sell you the base platform. A lot of different options. And uh, yeah, can't thank you all for joining on a quick live stream <laughs> tour of the Rivian van. I'll definitely have a video coming to you in a couple days. Tomorrow, if I can edit it in time, will be the Rivian R2. I've did a full tour of that, interior, exterior, everything on R2. And then this one should come right after. Later on this week, I'm gonna be going to California to drive the Ionic 5N on track, which I'm very much looking forward to. Living in a dream world, absolutely, that's crazy. And then I'm going to France to drive the new Macan EV, which I've already driven, but I'm able to actually tell you about how it drives when I go there. So yeah, living in a dream world, but honestly, this is the one I'm most excited about. And it just happened out of the blue. So I can't thank RJ enough for letting me play around with this. Can't thank Rivian enough for letting it happen, really, and letting Out of Spec be the first one to produce a video on this thing that we're actually driving without like a Rivian employee in the seat or anything like that. They're just like, here you go, do what you need to do with it. So thank you guys, appreciate it. And uh, we'll catch you all on another one soon. Bye.